Gephi to visualize the graph output files and coordinating those with other output files. You'll need the software program Gephi in order to do this. Gephi is a free, online, open source program for visualizing graph files, and you can download it here at gephi.org slash users slash download. I've already downloaded and installed the program, so I will open it and show you how to analyze your graph file. When Gephi loads, under New Project, you'll click Open Graph File. From here, navigate to the HDCMD output and select the graph file you wish to visualize. I'm going to visualize chromosome 8. So I find the file chromosome 8 CMD graph and click Open. These graph files are all undirected, so under Graph Type, select Undirected. Click OK. Now, Gephi defaults into the preview mode. Up here at the left, there's three tabs, Overview, D Data Laboratory, and Preview. You need to go to the Overview to actually work with the graph, and then you go to Preview when you're ready to save. Now, when the graph first opens, it looks very different from the graphs in our publication. In order to make it look a little bit more understandable and to do the color coding, you need to apply a few different metrics. The first we're going to do is the layout. Under Layout, to mimic what we've done in the publication, first choose Force Atlas 2. This will separate all of the merged regions so that you can see them individually and not all mashed up together like this. Click Run. As you can see, different clumps or merged regions immediately separate from each other. Give it a bit of time to make sure that all of them separate and once they're done, you can hit stop. Now you probably want to bring them back in to make one cohesive looking graph, but still keep your merged region separate. To do this, you can apply the fructerman rheingold layout, and we've changed the gravity to 50. This just brings them in a little bit tighter. Click run. Now, as you can see, it begins to pull the merged regions into the center of the graph, but still keeping them separate from other merged regions. This really helps you be able to pick out interesting information from your data points. You can change the gravity or the speed or anything you want really on these. Um, most of it is just for different aesthetic looks. So play around with Gephi and see what you like best. This just happens to be how we did it. If you zoom in, if you'd like to zoom in, Put your mouse where you wish to zoom and then use your scroll to either zoom in or zoom out. From here, you can actually play with the graph as it's working on the layout to make it look a little different. For instance, here we have two nodes connected by a single edge that are spanning another group of nodes. I don't really like the look of that, so I might just move one out of the way to try and get them to separate. You can do this by hand change of the graph, if you wish, until you get a layout that you think looks nice. Once you like the layout, feel free to stop the layout program. Next, you may want to color code the nodes. We've color coded the nodes so that nodes that are more hot, more interconnected, are red, and individual nodes, or nodes that are only present in one or two individuals, are blue. To do this, you're going to be ranking them based on something called degree. So under nodes, choose a rank parameter, click on degree. From here, we are applying a heat map color scheme. To do this, beside color, select this box, go to default, and choose the heat map color scheme at the very bottom. Now, I want my interconnected nodes to be red and the individual nodes to be blue to in order to show hot spots and cold spots. The way the color scheme comes up will actually be the opposite. So click on the box again and hit invert. Now press apply. Now our graph has been colored similarly to the way our graphs in the paper look. If you want to now save your graph, go to preview. Under preview, hit refresh to visualize your graph. 
Gephi automatically puts in curved lines as opposed to straight. To get rid of this, under Edges, deselect the curved option. Hit Refresh. Now your graph looks similar to the way it did in the overview window. In order to save your graph, you need to click Beside Export on this button. From here, select where you would like to save your graph. I'm going to save mine under Documents. Choose the type of image you want to save as. I'm going to select PNG. Make sure you select your file format before you put in your file name. PNG file, and we can call it chromosome 8. Now, in order to make your saved image not look cut off the way it does in this preview window, you actually have to resave over that same file. Click on the button again, go to where you saved your file, select PNG, and save it again. Overwrite the existing file. This is just a property of Gephi. For some reason, you need to save the file twice to make sure it doesn't get chopped off in the final image. While it looks chopped off in the preview window, the final image will not be chopped off. Now once you have all of your graph files visualized and colored the way you like, you might want to learn something more about them. Here is the karyotype of all of the chromosomes we presented in our application note. Looking at this, you can immediately pick out interesting things between the chromosomes. For instance, chromosome 10 has a lot of merged regions that take up many, many CMB events. These red balls are individual CMB events that are highly related, so they've occurred in many individuals. On contrast, something like chromosome 19 or 15 has a lot of blue events, which means it has a lot of unique CMB events that only occurred in one or a few individuals. Something I find interesting is in chromosome 16, we have this large merged region and a second merged region, which are connected with one single event. Let's look at that closer. I have a zoomed in image where I've added the node labels. To do this in Gephi, go to your graph in the preview window and click show labels. This will allow the labels to come up on the nodes. Click refresh. They initially are very large, but you can change the font size to make them smaller. If you're using a small sample with only a few CMBs, you might not need to do this. Once you've added your node labels, you can view them by zooming in. Here is that region I was finding interesting. We see a huge merged region here and a second, all connected by one individual. Now if I want to learn more about that, I can look up on chromosome 16 the CMB with ID number 472. To do this, I've opened one of the output files from HDCMB. This is the chromosome 16 output file. It has all of the IDs for the CMB events, and their start and end position, and what other CMB events they merge with. Looking at the graph, we can see that ID 472 is what's holding this interesting structure together. Let's find that. Here is ID 472. It begins around 32 million base pairs and is in that range. We can see that it merges with a large number of CMB events, which makes sense looking at our graph. If you want to see this in the UCSC track files, we can do that as well. In the other video, we've already shown how to look at UCSC genome browser track files. Here I've loaded up the track file for chromosome 16. We saw from our output file that that interesting structure is occurring around 32 million base pairs, somewhere in here. By clicking on this region, we can zoom in. I've already loaded that up. Here's the zoomed in region. 
we see that there are a variety of individuals with a merge in this, or with a CNB in this particular area. These have formed one large merge. Then we have another area of merged CNB events. And right here, you can see individual CNB event 472 connects them all together. This is why we have these two very large merge regions and this very interesting structure in chromosome 16. By clicking on it, we can learn a little more about it, like the exact position, the band, the genome size, and the ID from the input file, 472. This is how you can link your graph files, your UCSC track files, and the output files to investigate potential interesting regions in your data. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks very much, and thanks for using HDCNB.